So again, uh, Melanesia, large dis large islands and uh, short distances. So you see Papua New Guinea, all the way into the Solomon Islands, Vanuatu and Fiji there, um, making up the base of Melanesia. So when you're talking about settlement of the Pacific and going out into the Pacific, you kind of look at that barrier of line of islands there. And when Polynesians are selling, if you guys can see from Papua New Guinea and the Solomon Islands, when they're selling out that way, they were first entering into the Pacific Ocean. They were the first guys going out there. And it was kind of a good thing, actually, that there were large islands with short distances because it made that initial settlement effort probably a little bit easier because it was easier to find those bigger islands in the distances as they went on their beginning. Micronesia, on the other hand, is, is very interesting because it's very small islands, very small atolls and short distances. Um, Micronesia does have large islands like Pompeii um, and Palau and Guam are some of the larger islands uh, in Micronesia. However, when you look at Micronesian canoe design, um, it's really evident that when you're talking about navigational skills and when you're talking about skills of uh, people sailing, it really kind of hit its pinnacle and its peak that you find a lot of the great master navigators in Micronesia because micro um, navigating in these uncertain waters is very, very dangerous business um, in order to avoid these atolls at night, even during the day. Um, so it's a testament to the art of the navigator. And when we look at Polynesia, we kind of see this mix of small islands and large distances. So Polynesian canoe design actually adapted to sort of fit this, right? So you see the advent of the double hull canoe, which can carry more weight and can carry more people because it's long, large distances. You have to be able to sustain, sustain yourself at sea for many, many days, many, many weeks, um, many, many months. Micronesian canoe design is very slender, long water lines, very, very uh, uh, swift and very, very quick turning uh, canoes in order to avoid those atolls that you just pop up out of nowhere, okay? Um, but Polynesia navigating techniques took on a very, very different uh, meaning because of these large distances that you had to be gone for a long time. So in terms of migration and settlement, okay, so we're moving from geography to, you know, from the places to now, who are the people that settled them, okay? so. In terms of migration, there were two migrations, okay? So remember that there are two major migrations into uh, the Pacific for settlement. The first migration was the ancient migration. It was approximately 40,000 BP, that's before present. They were called Papuan, and they went to Australia, to the Bismarck Archipelago, Papua New Guinea, the Philippines. They crossed over something called the Sunda Shelf, and it wasn't an, a voyage of the ocean like we're going to have in the second uh, migration it was an overland migration so for the most part these people walked okay and it was a very very ancient ancient migration right over 40,000 years ago and so you see a, a satellite picture of the Sunda shelf so these white areas are connecting Australia Papua New Guinea Borneo all the way up into mainland China and Southeast Asia is this shelf and this is kind of tells you how they traveled because the shelf um, was during the last major ice age when the uh, the water levels were way 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 below the shelf so the shelf that's now underwater was exposed land back then so it basically made up this continent and they just kind of went on their merry way and you know went uh, eastward and settled over land and it wasn't until many many years later because this was so ancient that the water's level rose after the ice age um, locking them into the different islands so our first migration, again, um, very, very ancient, um, before the last ice age, um, and very, very different people. These are the Papuans, the Aust Austra Australian Aborigines, um, people of the Bismarck Archipelago, people of the Papua New Guinea Highlands, um, and certain uh, Aboriginal tribes of the Philippines that live up in the mountains, um, and overland migration, again, um, this was the first major migration into the Pacific. But what we really want to get to are the stars of the show, which are the Austronesians, who are the uh, ancestors of all modern-day Hawaiians, uh, of Polynesians, Micronesians, most Micronesians, um, and mix of Melanesian. Um, so 
Austronesians are basically for this is good because this is a Hawaiian studies course um, of the Hawaiians. So this the Austronesians were our ancestors and again a very 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 different uh, type of migration okay because this was much much more recently um, probably about 6,000 before present probably a little bit longer before that but roughly approximately 6,000 BP and they brought with them a different language a different culture and very very different material items so they came with this this intent to settle and conquer and they weren't land people they were people of the ocean and they had things in their material culture that were basically a part of this seafaring attitude and they were like marauding people and they came through and they just really when they passed through the Papuans who were already living there before they basically either one coexisted with them on the shorelines or pushed them up into the mountains because when you look at the dispersal of Austronesian speaking people and Papuan speaking people you find mostly that the Papuans are up in the highlands or kind of hybridized with the Austronesians at the shoreline but the basic fact is that the Austronesians always stayed by the shoreline and basically rarely went up Malka or into the highlands as we say so they brought with them this thing called Lapita pottery and Lapita culture okay it's not a type of bread um, Lapita is describes these material culture that's written at the bottom there stone and shell adds his scrapers obsidian tools and so on and so forth so if you look at a lot of those things they have to do with the ocean they have to do with travel and they had they, they kept their supplies light and tight and so they could move from place to place and they moved pretty fairly rapidly once they left the Asian continent moved in to the open ocean part of Melanesia and from there when they settled out into Fiji they set, they set, sailed and settled very very rapidly so we're going to look at a timeline okay it didn't take 40,000 years it took uh, very quickly very rapidly so um, approximately 6,000 before present into the Pacific and there are debatable uh, you know times about that but about 3,600 into the Bismarck Archipelago uh, Santa Cruz Vanuatu New Caledonia um, into Fiji Tonga Samoa about 3,000 BP where they became the hub of the Pacific so I'm gonna, I want you guys to remember that term because it's going to show up and the hub of the Pacific kind of has to do with it, where it sort of bridged Pacific culture um, and the Austronesians settled in and around Fiji, Tonga, Samoa for approximately a thousand years 800 to a thousand years um, before going on okay so this is kind of a unique facet of Pacific settlement and it's unique also because um, these three cultures together sort of created a lot of surrounding culture the every other Polynesian descendant they came after Tonga Samoa and also cultures up into Micronesia and back into Melanesia as well so um, it's kind of realistically the hub of the Pacific um, and also if you look on the little map over there to the right um, you see Austronesian languages so there's a map of Austronesian languages that stretch which covers the entire Pacific you know from Hawaii to Easter Island to New Zealand and all the way back into Melanesia back into Indonesia and if you look at that tail to the left it stretches all the way back to if anybody knows what island that is um, Madagascar so on the island of Madagascar there's a language uh, spoken there which is an Austronesian language it's related to one of the languages most closely related to one of the languages spoken on, spoken in, I think in southwest Borneo so it's kind of a uh, Indonesian language so you gotta ask yourself how did these languages get so far across the spread of the earth right it's halfway across the globe um, so it's I think a very very big testament to the skill and the drive and the veracity of these uh, settlers so Austronesian settlers really really went and so much has yet to be discovered about this uh, travel westward okay but We'll save that for a later date and another class. Um, so moving on. So the question is, after reflecting on geography and geology and the maps and all this sort of timelines and stuff, so where was the Austronesian homeland? Okay, so 